Well, today's Friday, it's the 10th of November 2023, and we've come across to the Playa de Palma, so we're just near to the airport. It's uh, on the east side of Palma today, where there's uh, a huge long beach. There's actually people on it, sitting on it, and there's people in the sea. Uh, yesterday was a cold, miserable day to start with. It did brighten up, uh, but the promise is for a much better weekend. So let's have a look at what's going on in the Playa de Palma. So just a quick look out at the beach, and you can see there's a few people there. Uh, there appears to be there appears to be no lifeguard on duty, and there are no sunbeds on this part of the beach. Lots and lots of tiny little boats on there. <laughs> Uh, brittle bristles on the sea there are, there's hundreds of little yachts out there so they must be doing something and there's uh, some quite good waves uh, so people are sort of playing in the waves not too many people in the sea and you walk across the road and uh, well the bars the bars are looking pretty busy in fact they're looking very busy the sun's shining and uh, we parked the car just up the road, we had to walk down, it was very busy, it's difficult to find a parking space. And uh, we walked past three really big hotels and uh, they were all open. And I'm just looking there, there's the Son Hotel Rio San Francisco. And uh, that's open, people are sitting on the balconies. So it's a tale of two different worlds, isn't it? it is. You go across to Palma Nova and Magaluf, Magaluf in particular, which is like a ghost town. And here we are on the uh, Playa de Palma, and it's as busy as busy. It's the same weather. <laughs> Yesterday, though, it did start off. It was cold and it was miserable. It was grey. And then around about 10 o'clock, it started to rain, and it rained pretty much for the rest of the morning. And uh, even by lunchtime, it was still quite grey. And uh, we chose to uh, go out for lunch with uh, Monroe and Marcia. And uh, we met Barbara, by the time Barbara and Wolfgang, Barbara and Wolfgang were in there, uh, two German Germans who were here on holiday, and uh, they introduced themselves. You can see the bar across the road, packed. And uh, after we finished our lunch, the sun was shining and it was a lovely sunny day again. Yeah. It's amazing to see how busy it is even at this late part of the, the season. Did you not expect all these people here? Well, I think I was expecting some. Uh, but I wasn't expecting it to be quite as busy as this. The, the, the German market tends to last longer than the British market. So... Uh, they probably still have lots of flights, don't they? It, yeah, there's obviously flights and the hotels are open here. Uh, we haven't been to Pagera for a while, but I'm guessing Pagera will have quite a few hotels open. Uh, here's the beach bar and that's open but because we've had such a, a lot of wind over the past week or so it's quite wind, uh, wavy out there but I can't see any beach beds anywhere along the line so people have got to sit on the sand and bring their own beds Now, this is actually probably one of the longest, if not the longest, stretches of sand uh, in Mallorca, stretching from Palma all the way to, in the distance there, El Arenal. See that some of the uh, hotels are closed, but some of them have already started the work. So there's one here 
already got the scaffolding up and the workers are on there so that's one of the things that uh, people can do in the winter time they can do some if they're uh, uh, out of a job because they were working in a hotel or in the in the industry the catering industry or well, they can go and work in uh, labouring jobs like that and many other jobs around so it does tend to somewhat even out not completely but somewhat and uh, some of the shops are open as well there's quite a few people like us having a little walk along the promenade which is perfectly flat here and it's uh, quarter past three in the afternoon some wind surfers out there as well taking advantage of the breeze Sure, whether that's a wind surfer or a kite surface, you must have a kite. We're not walking by the shops, are we? Walk back by the shops if you like. Lots of work going on down here. So the facts and figures that I was talking I was talking about in the news earlier on this week show that uh, the British were the, the biggest group of visitors uh, to Mallorca. They've regained that regained that top spot after falling behind uh, the Germans in second place but the Germans are going to do a bit of catching up if this is anything to go by and this is uh, a consequence of the storms that we've had you can see the water there's a little uh, water outlet here so there's water coming out from the main from the, the island and it goes into the sea but it's been coming out at such a rate it's totally eroded the sand here and uh, the which is though they've had bulldozers on, but uh, it's still washed away. It will eventually get evened up, and uh, that will all get filled in again before the new season, I'm sure. And the other thing is that they're trying to attract a different type of tourist here, and particularly trying to attract uh, Americans and Asians and Middle Eastern visitors who uh, apparently spend much more money when they're here. So I'm not sure what a typical Brit spends or a typical German spends, but uh, some of these people who are coming from America and from the Far East and Middle East are spending something like 2,000 euros a day. So they're high spenders. And that brings money into the island. And at one point in August, we broke all records for the number of people actually on the island from one go, and it reached about one and a half million. So, not quite double the population, but uh, heading in that direction. Lots of seaweed. through that's that's mega park it's like one big um, party place that's uh, close up for the season a bit too loud a bit too noisy for me so not the sort of place Winter and I would frequent but very popular in the summer and there was a, a group of German tourists actually that came and broke a, a world record for the most beer being drunk. Ridiculous amounts of beer. And they came over with that perfect intention. It was on average they drank at least 20 beers each or something. 
in whatever space of time it was. I lost the meter, where was she? Bringing up the rear. So we're just looking back towards Palmer now. And over there we've got Palmer. And she should go out, go out towards Palmer Nova and Magaly in the distance. Crazy number of tiny little yachts out there. And they're at quite a distance, they're not close to shore. Nothing but sea and eventually Africa, I suppose. Very warm. Peter was asking me if I should put my jumper on. And yesterday I got long trousers and a jumper on. Today I'm back in my shorts and shirt sleeves. feel warm in the sun. My phone's telling me 20 degrees If you're in the sun, it feels a lot warmer. And if you go out to the sun or the sun goes behind the clouds, as it's doing now a little bit, then you can actually feel the drop in temperature. But certainly in the sun, sun it's very, very warm. It's nice and fresh air, doesn't it? Bendy bus to take you to Palmer. That's the number 25. Across the road is Amrum Beach Club. It uh, looks very closed. And they have visitors here in the evenings. don't know how busy it will be in the evenings. I mean, the, the, it tends to be the road further back, the one a little bit further back that tends to be busy. It's obviously very windy here. The waves in front are even bigger, I think. Be splashing against some rocks or something. Guard stations on land. <laughs> These concrete blocks here are to prevent vehicles driving along with the promenade came after the terrible mowing downs in France 
and they bring them out, these concrete blocks, to other big events when they're closing off roads so that uh, they can't, someone can't come down with a vehicle, trucks and things like that, big heavy vehicles. Are you ready to go back yet? Yeah. I am, I think. Now we're coming to an area where things are closed. This is B04 Surf Camp, Palm Beach. Well, there are waves out there that look as though you probably could do a little bit of surfing, though not particularly on this beach. Usually, though, if we go a little bit, if you go back beyond Campastilla sometimes you see some surfers. There's some very brave souls going into the sea there. Have a splash around. A bit brave the word, probably silly. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to make our way back? Looking towards the airport now and there's an aeroplane just taking off. And just to show that we are in a holiday resort, the train's still running. That's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? This is a, a tourist train that runs along the Playa de Palma, which is about, about five kilometres, six kilometres long, not sure the exact distance, but it's uh, about five kilometres at least. And uh, this train will get you from one end to the other. One, one family on there. <laughs> Personalised service. If you're here in the summer, there are these little parks with trees so you can get away from the sun. There's this new, new shelter on the beach. I thought I just saw a dinosaur. Oh, it's a headed one, yeah. <laughs> Is that really a dinosaur I see? Dino Magaluf. Oh, it was indeed. Number 25, so they're quite frequent. We've seen two in the last 10 minutes. Local police station up there, if you need a local police or anything. I lost my keys on this walk. <laughs> never to be found again. Will Quite it? a few years ago, yeah. Unfortunately, never found them. Uh, got my car key, my house key, and we did go to the local police here, and we called into lots of the different places Just along the way. Came back to have a look, yeah, eventually things like keys, keys in particular, get sent to a central office in Palma, and uh, you can go and route around in a box full of which keys. One do you want? <laughs> I suppose you could. Uh, but he gave me when I went there. He gave me. A, the recent box of, and then he brought out another box. He said these are, these have been here for years. And I had to look through all of those, but none for me, unfortunately. And his keys were lost forever. Get 
your ice creams here and your fresh fruit fresh fruit Quite a few of the families that we used to teach years ago uh, have businesses on this side of the island. And, uh, and this is one of them actually. This is the Idasanis. Closer to the, uh, the Mega Park Palace. <laughs> Those all winterized. Popular area for cycling because it is just so flat. No hills to climb along here, just flat roads. these holiday makers for a drink in a minute. <laughs> Lisa wants to go for a drink. It is Friday after all, the weekend has now officially started. Well, it's near coming up towards four o'clock. So if we were working we would be finishing work around now. people on tonight. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's just not tonight. Maybe. Why do you want to come back tonight, dear? <laughs> no, I didn't think you did. <laughs> Once we get tucked up in bed or tucked up in the on the sofa or in the chair, watching the TV, nothing would drag us out. Much nicer to come out now, isn't it? to come out when the sun's shining, the sky is blue and there's a nice breeze. And you can see that there are quite a few places open, a few that are closed, but uh, I wanted to get your attention at the 10th of November. There's the train and there's nobody on it now. Thank you. Is that a Rolex for five euros he offered me? 
<laughs> oh, what? Rolex or five euro? Ooh. Cocktail station, about here. Cocktail station. Is this there? Shoot. Going. No, he only has decided that uh, the music's a bit too loud here. It's really puts me off and uh, it messes with my videos, so give that one a miss. But I think there's plenty of choice as we go along, there's lots of places that are open. This one's nice and quiet. This one's nice and quiet. You just need to find a shady seat there. Keep trying. So uh, he was offering me a, a Rolex for five euros. There's been a gang in Palmer that have been busted. And they're slight like multinational gangs from all over the world, these people. It was four men and uh, a woman. The woman was Spanish, but the rest was from different parts of the world. And they'd obviously come here specifically to target uh, watches. And uh, they started way back in March or April, and uh, they were taking watches. And uh, the fourth watch that they took was a Rolex valued at 100,000 euros. And they snatched it off somebody's wrist. They uh, managed to catch them and they managed to return the Rolex to the rightful owner. And uh, these people have now been caught and uh, they will have to serve their time, I think. It's a busy bar. Rent a car or rent a scooter or rent a bike. Gracias. Merchandise, isn't it? Well, that's a merchant, <laughs> Now we come down and Sunnol's on his day off. That's another train. Best bargains in town here, though. Look for the merchant, Friday and sunny. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Oh, yes, just the way I want. Oh, we just had a really nice drink at the uh, Massilia. It was very nice. And it's very busy. Alibaba! <laughs> just look how busy the places are. What I think they're going to stay here and watch the sun go down. Yeah. Can we cross the road? <laughs> oh, 
those little yachts are still out there. Well, we're back now, more or less, to where we started. And it's time for us to go home. Shopping. Oh, shopping. Oh dear, she's caught me out. <laughs> so yes, we're going to go off and do a little, a little bit of spot, spot of shopping, and then we'll go home. So thanks very much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.